Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today we're gonna be taking a look at Pro Revenge. And if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to do so, hit that notifications button, give us a like and a comment in the end of this video. Sell beer to my kid, will ya? So we all know that sometimes revenge is a dish best served cold, and this story is an old family legend. My grandmother was a pro at the long game, and this one was one of her best acts. Back in the 70s, there was a little pizza shop around the corner from their house that she discovered was selling beer to my 15-year-old uncle. She marched right into the store during the busiest time on a Saturday night and yelled at the owner that that stuff needed to stop now. The idiot waved her off and said it was his business and he could do whatever he wanted. He practically shoved her off out of the front door and told her not to come back. My grandmother told him if he ever sold beer to my uncle again, it would be the end of his days in that neighborhood. Remember, this was the 70s. The police weren't really enforcing liquor laws as stringently as they are now, especially when it comes to corner pizza shops and one-woman allegations that their 15-year-old son was getting beer illegally. Fast forward about one month and what does my grandmother find under my uncle's bed? Beer. And she she knows where he got it. She confronts him just like before, he says the pizza guy has been selling it to him and all the neighborhood kids. My grandmother asks some of the other mothers if they have found their kids with beer and sure enough, yep, it's a thing. Now you might be thinking, so what, a cup of teenagers with beer, big deal. We all did that, except this guy was making a killing selling beer to the neighborhood kids. According to my uncle, he was selling to kids as young as 8. This he confirmed for me when he was an adult, and even sold it to them out of the back door after hours, which is really legal since it breaks major legal laws to do that. My grandfather then went to the cops and they played the we'll take a report and look into it type of instance on him. Not to fear, my grandmother was going to make good in her trap. I should mention that this whole thing went down in August. My grandmother threatened my uncle with life imprisonment if he ever bought beer there again and to completely stay out of that shop because bad things are going to happen. August comes and goes and so does September, October, November, and the entire winter and spring. Like I said, my grandmother liked to play the long game. So July rolls around and completely out of the blue, a municipal snowplow rolls down the street at midnight and right into the front of this guy's shop backing up and smashed into it again and once more for good measure. It then pulls back and rolls down the street like nothing happened, never to be seen again. The whole thing's witnessed by a couple of neighbors sitting on their front steps trying to beat the heat that night. They called the cops and no one could believe what they were looking at and that there was a snowplow out in July. Clearly, someone was mistaken. The mothers of the neighborhood knew there was no mistake. They knew what went down and it was a silent secret among them. No one spoke of it, no one acknowledged it, and no one cared. My family knew the real story. My grandmother knew someone who needed money so she paid him to help. The guy had a buddy who had access to snowplows for the county. The rest was history. Even with all the money the pizza shop guy made selling beer to miners, he didn't have adequate business insurance to rebuild. Within days, it was closed for good. TLDR. The guy sold beer to my underage uncle, so my grandmother sent the snowplow through his store in the middle of summer and closed his business for good. Hey man, that reminds me of like, you know, someone asked the grandmother, what happened? She turns in and she goes, I don't know. He fell, you know? It's scary. Grandmothers, man. They'll poison your food and smile at you. Take my flight home, I will take your money. My first post has on mobile. Me, the DFO. Dumb freaking officer, Lieutenant Colonel. As a new lieutenant in the army a few years back, I was tasked to be a guest observer, evaluator at the National Training Center in California. Basically, it's a large desert with small towns for military units to train before deploying. On day 29, once all evaluations were complete, I was set to fly back to Texas and return to my unit. In the observation, Observer controller barracks, I was approached by a colonel, DFO. Lieutenant Bucks, I am taking your place on the flight back to Fort Quadruple X. Sir, 
you're part of the training unit. All the observers are leaving on this flight and my bags have already been sent to the airfield. I don't have any chains of clothes. You'll be okay for a few days. Officers must innovate to be successful. And innovate I did. When I returned to my post, I was unable to locate my gear, including body armor, computer, cold weather gear, and other like items due to the fact that they flew in two days before me on the flight I was kicked off. I informed my command that they initiate an inquiry called a FLIPO, Financial Liability Investigation of Property Loss, in which an investigator is required to determine the reason for lost government property. The investigation officer determined that it was not my fault and that the DFO abused his authority to return home early. Additionally, since I was left at the training center for over 30 days, I was due additional pay for being away for over a month, which amounted to over a thousand dollars. DFO was found liable for over 7,000 worth of my equipment and had to pay for, which I subsequently found and turned into the central issue facility. I was reissued a new set of kit. I bought myself a nice chair and put the rest into my TSP, government equivalent of a 401k, with the extra temporary duty TDY money, and freak face got reduced to a staff job. Thanks for reading, added, thanks for the silver stranger, added, platinum, thank you, this is really unexpected but truly made my day, added, thank you for the gold, nice stranger, hey guys, I'll be telling you these flippers are a pain, and the National Training Center is not fun at all, I mean, I've been there a couple of times, and it's actually located on the Death Valley, so I don't have to say anything else about that. Illegally park and block driveways in our neighborhood and do it consistently. While throwing a party, expect what's coming. Two years ago, a new family moved into our quiet neighborhood and began the reign of terror. We've lived here for over 20 years in this neighborhood and except for those two past years, it's been wonderful. I love our neighbors, except this family. This family just sucks. I am not even sure where to begin. They're loud, they're dirty, they're obnoxious, their dog barks at all hours, they constantly yell at each other, they throw parties well into the night, they steal my older neighbor's paper, they actually train their Hotwiler to fetch the neighbor's paper, impressive but wrong. They throw their dog's poo into other yards, ugh, so much. They even cut my 80-something year old neighbor's prize rose for themselves. Who does that? There are about a hundred issues I could write about in how we've all dealt with them, but this past weekend was my own glorious take on it all. Oh, and yes, we try talk to them tried to invite them over, we've done nice things for them, and all we've expected is that they act like decent neighbors. That never happened. In our neighborhood, parking is scarce. Most of these homes are classic 1950s with single lane driveways and parking is limited even on the streets. There's a busy road a few blocks away that has a great nightlife and popular restaurants which means that at times, especially on the weekends, the streets can fill up. This family has four Four drivers and five vehicles, with only enough space for two in their driveway at a time. Constantly, they would park and leave their vehicles for days and sometimes weeks in front of others' homes, sometimes leaving their driveway empty for no reason with all their cars parked on the road. I kinda believe that, in itself, isn't that big of a deal except for how and when they would do it. They were intentional about it all, would do so to try to cause the most grief with everyone, and this went on for months. A complete screw you to everyone. After months of this and no one retaliating or giving them the satisfaction of how upset we all are, they started parking deliberately in ways to make it difficult to get out of our driveways. I had to have my husband come out most mornings to guide me so I wouldn't hit their cars as I backed out of our own driveway. There are also times where they squeeze my neighbor's car on the street to where they couldn't get out. Finally, an older retired neighbor goes to the city police station and inquires about what to do. They found a code law stating that so much space from the sides of driveways and yada 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 is required. So we come home at night and freshly painted yellow curbs outlining every house surrounding this one. 
A few weeks ago, my husband's car breaks down and he has to get towed. On his way back, he starts talk with the tow truck driver about this douchebag neighbors and their cars. He tells my husband that if these cars are parked illegally, we should call the non-emergency line and if they receive a ticket, to call him and he can tow them at owner's expense. It's the law. My husband and him keep talking and even meet up for a beer a few nights later. They're big fans of the Blazers, Rip City. He's a real good guy. About a month ago, we met a couple in our fair city and it just so happens that the husband's an officer. We're already planning on meeting that Friday night and when we met, I brought up the douchebag neighbors and their parking. He says that he'll drive through on his shift if he gets time and if he sees them parked in the yellow, he has no problem ticketing them. Great! He also gets some of his friends to check it out when they have time to. Fantastic! We've been calling almost daily at this point about their cars parked illegally but nothing was happening. That Saturday night he sends me a text saying he ticketed three cars. I missed that text so no tow truck but I kinda figure with three tickets they'd get the idea. They didn't. Off and on all week it was the same. This past Saturday the teenage son throws a party and everyone, I mean every single one of their guests and then parked on the yellow of someone's driveway or blocked someone out altogether. Obviously the little shit told all of his friends to block our driveways or block our cars in. I sent a text to our officer friend who told me to call the non-emergence line and he'd be the one to look into it. But I'm scheming bigger. I call up the tow truck driver and tell him that there are at least 15 cars parked illegally and all are about to receive parking tickets for blocking driveways and cars. I let him know we're friends with an officer and he and I scheme a little further. We got a solid plan. I call our officer friend back and tell him our plan and I also mention that the party is likely going to be filled with underage drinkers. Now, I hate busting parties but I make exception for little shits and especially little underage in drinking and driving shits. He and I finalized the plan. Here's how it all went down. Officer and three of his partners go through the neighborhood sighting all of the cars. Meanwhile, our tow truck driver friend has assembled a group of drivers in the nearby grocery store parking lot. My husband and I make anonymous calls about a possible underage party. The tow truck drivers start at the ends of our street, grabbing the cars as quickly as possible. A few alarms here and there, but no way they could hear it in the party. When they approach the house, my husband makes an anonymous call about an underage party in our neighborhood. Conveniently, our officer friend just so happens to still be in the neighborhood, so he and his partner go over to the house to check on it. As they knock on the door, lights go out, music shuts off, and the house goes quiet. At this moment, the tow trucks come in and are now towing the remaining five cars right in front of their home. I just wish I could see the kid's face inside as they're all having a dilemma about what to do. Do they go out and bust in themselves for underage drinking and try to stop their cars from being told, or do they just sit and bite the bullet and watch $250 plus go down the drain? On Sunday, they had three cars returned from being told and all three are parked just shy of the yellow lines. I'll call this a win. My husband and a couple of neighbors all spent Sunday putting up some new cameras. They're all very giddy and loud about it. Something about all the lights and the police on Saturday made them nervous. LOL. Add it. For the Threats against me for busting an underage party. How did you skip right over as they knock on the doors, lights go out, music shuts off and the house goes quiet? Nothing happened to the kids at the party other than them watching their cars get towed off. In America, the police can't just go into a home without a warrant. If the kids aren't opening their door or inviting the officers in, there's nothing the police can do other than stand outside. Hey guys, I can just say be courteous with your neighbors. I mean, don't be a douche and park in front of people's house without their knowledge and without their authorization, okay? Most neighbors, if you explain to them, they may just ask you to not park in a certain area of their house, so just talk to people. Act like a jerk and try to get me fired? Enjoy watching my promotion before you get fired. Background. I work for a communications company. We primarily sell internet-based all-in-one communication solutions for business. I'm in the software development department working as a software tester currently. I've been with the company a long time. I have worked my way up from phone support and have a ton of knowledge about the company, including policy and culture. I also have a relative who has worked in HR for 
many years. The story. I had been working as a software tester for about two years doing manual testing. Our team was fairly unsupervised as we didn't really have a manager. But the company was expanding quickly, so they hired us a manager. Enter Jay the Douche. At first, things were fine, he was just learning the company. However, it was odd, he never asked anyone for any information. He just said he would do his own research and spend the first month online reading stuff. Not sure what that taught him about our company specifically, though. After the first month he hit the ground running, he immediately started creating automation tasks, adding to the existing testing code, and creating creating stupid rules that made no sense. He broke tons of stuff and took credit for work that wasn't his. Everyone hated him and we all referred him as Douche J. For the most part, we all ignored him. As of this point, no one has specifically said he was our manager. He was just here to help provide direction. Fast forward a few months and everyone on the team wants to quit. No one can stand him. He and I butt heads more than others because I know he's wrong and I make my decisions based on the best interests of the customers. He hated that I never get in trouble, but I was hand selected for the position by our CIO. He knows how hard they work. Well, Jay keeps trying to get me in trouble, he finally succeeds. I get a write-up for him and that's my final warning. I've never been written up before. I talk to my HR family member, review the company handbook, and then I go to HR with my write-up. I fight and I win. I get a warning instead. Jay is livid. He gives me the stink eye for months to follow. Fast forward again and he's still after me. But I have a family emergency coming up. I have to move out of town. I apply to work from home and my request is granted. Jay can't stand it, tries to fight it and convince the company not to let me. However, he's not high enough the chain to override my approval from a C-level manager. He's running out of time to get me fired. I'm the office working late, daily planning for my move and finishing up some work to allow me time for the move. One of the company's policies for our department is that everyone gets to work home one day a week. You pick as long as it's a Monday or Friday. People often use this to work from home when sick. Well, I have a medical condition that sometimes requires that I take medicine that means I can't drive the car. I emailed the office and let them know I was going to work from home due to being sick. I work for about 30 minutes. Then Jay sends me a message. Tells me that employees are not allowed to pick when they work from home. And I need to take my day off and use PTO. I inform him that I already work part of the day and I can't take PTO. He insists that I stop work immediately, so I do. I then contact HR because I know he's coming after me. I confirm that as a salaried employee, if I work at all in a day, I cannot be required to take PTO. HR confirms. I forward the email to Jay. Once again, I've won the game and he is so upset I can see steam coming out of his ears every time he looks at me. The next day, I'm back to work. Jay sends me an email with a final write-up with a recommendation for termination because I took an unauthorized day off. What the hell? I immediately forward his email to HR with proof he told me to take the day. The screenshot of all the conversations I had with him about it and prove I forwarded the previous HR decision to him. In the email, I also included that I was feeling a formal complaint against him for a hostile workplace targeting, bullying, retaliation and a violation of my ADA rights. The response is swift, sweet and awesome. I am immediately notified by Jay's boss that moving forward I report directly to him. My write-up has been torn up and I can start working from home immediately prior to my move. Jay is demoted from being the manager of our team. He is super upset. Within two weeks they demote him from being the manager of his other team and then let him go within the month. Prior to his being fired I got promoted up a level. I made sure to mention it off in our group chat channels. After I showed his true colors to management, he began treating everyone else worse as I was now off limits. Complaints rolled in so much they had to let him go. Serves him right, the douche added. 
for my terrible autocorrect mistakes. Hey guys, I worked in a multinational before for the business side and I'll tell you this, the best thing with your employees is learn from them and the most if they've been in the company for a long time and try to bring them in in all your decisions. Make them be part of the solution and don't think you're all high and mighty just because you're in a management position. And it doesn't matter if that's in the military, it doesn't matter if that's in the company, you should never do that. You want a people to actually work for you, make them buy in any project you do. And hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't, hit the notifications button, leave a like and leave a comment. And I hope you guys have a great end of this day and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow for more top ready posts.